Welcome to Sundays with Dr. Shippey. I'll be sharing the latest medical science and turning it into tips to help you live your most vibrant, healthy life. The first article that I want to share with you is an article that's just recently come out in Nature on alcohol and how it damages the chromosomes and mutates stem cells. Hmm, not a good thing, huh? So a lot of the research is showing that alcohol increases the risk for cancer. So this study actually explains some of the mechanisms on why that happens. So it causes the double-stranded DNA uh, to break and chromosome re rearrangements occur. And then the body tries to protect itself with a couple of enzymes, so alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes and DNA repair enzymes. So even if those enzymes are working pretty well, there's still damage that occurs. And then a lot of people have mutations in their enzymes that make that repair actually not happen very well at all, and thus leading to the increased risk for cancer. So what I recommend is that you really minimize the amount of alcohol that you take in or completely cut it out. So there's some, uh, a blog on my website that talks about the increased risk for breast cancer in women with increased alcohol intake. So this is pretty important information to uh, share with those that you love. The next article that I'm gonna share with you came out of the journal Gut on how the low FODMAP diet can really help patients with irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome is a huge problem in the United States. It affects about 14% of women and 9% of men, and it costs about $1.66 billion in healthcare a year. The symptoms are things like um, bloating, some constipation, diarrhea, increased gas, and then also some abdominal pain. So it really lowers people's quality of life, and it's also linked with increased symptoms of depression and anxiety. So what's really exciting is that dietary changes can really help with these symptoms because there's not really good medications that help with it. There are a lot of medications that are tried, but they're not very effective. And then probiotics can also help with it. But by dramatically changing people's diet, it can really reduce the symptoms significantly. It's a little bit challenging diet, so it's called a low FODMAP diet. So that's really decreasing the type of carbohydrates that kind of sit around and ferment in the gut very easily. So those foods are things like gluten and grains and dairy. There are a few nuts that are high FODMAP. So um, that would be things like pistachio and cashews. It's also a lot of um, sweeteners. So uh, things like sugar and honey, the artificial sweeteners like mannitol and erythritol, alcohols included. Uh, in, in the foods that you want to cut out, as well as um, certain vegetables that I think are actually healthy, so it's not a good long-term uh, diet, but taking out cauliflower, onions, and garlic, and artichokes can be very helpful with reducing some of these symptoms. If you want to get a list of what I recommend for the low FOD, FODMAP diet, it's actually a paleo low FODMAP diet, message me here on Facebook in the Messenger with your email address and we'll send you the diagram that will help you to know which foods to completely cut out, which ones you can eat little bits of, and then which ones you can eat as much as you want of. So it's a really great process because you start to see a difference in your symptoms, usually within a week, um, to dr dramatically reduce all that discomfort that can happen with irritable bowel syndrome. And the last study that I'm going to talk about today is a review article on probiotics. So you may have heard a lot about probiotics, but what they really are are the good bacteria and yeast that we really need for our immune systems to be healthy in our gut. So there are a lot of studies that have been done on three main probiotics, so lactobacilli, bifidobacterium, and saccharomyces. So the first two I really love. Those bacteria are great, but the yeast Saccharomyces, I actually see a lot of problems with where people get some overgrowth of the Saccharomyces and actually make their symptoms worse. And then sometimes it can trigger an autoimmune response. So in this uh, review article, it showed that there's a lot of benefits from taking probiotics. The probiotics play a really important role in communicating with the immune system. So it really helps to maintain some immune system regulation 
by direct communication with the immune system cells. And it's been shown to be extremely helpful in acute infectious diarrhea in things like antibiotic-induced diarrhea, so the, the bacteria Clostridium difficile. It also helps with colic, hepatic encephalopathy. And then when, with ulcerative colitis, it actually works as well as one of the most common drugs called mesalamine. It also works in the condition that we just talked about, the irritable bowel syndrome and necrotizing uh, colitis. If you ever are taking an antibiotic, it's really important to take a probiotic with it because it will help you to really uh, not wipe out your good bacteria and you wanna stay on it for a while afterwards. I think most people actually benefit from being on a probiotic all the time. And then especially if you're traveling and you're more likely to get be getting exposed to um, infections, even viruses, it can be super helpful to have a bunch of extra probiotics with you. The studies also show that probiotics are very safe for infants, children, adults, and the elderly. The place that you might wanna be a little careful is if you're if you're immunocompromised, like if you've had a transplant on your own immunosuppressants or you've been having chemotherapy. The other thing that's really important to note is that the studies show that if the, you don't have at least five billion of the bacteria, the uh, probiotic, they're not effective, so you wanna get much above that. My favorite daily probiotic is called daily probiotics. Message me here on Facebook in Messenger with your email address if you'd like to get a 10% off coupon on my favorite probiotic. And give me a thumbs up if you found some of the information helpful today and share it with people that have some of these conditions that might also benefit from the information. Thanks so much for joining me with Sundays with Dr. Shippey.